Mo moving on to the quick revision. Events timeline. In 1781, a madarsa was set up in Calcutta. So the oriental uh, teachers, the oriental uh, thinkers of the British, the British people, Englishmen, they thought that uh, it was important for the Britishers as well as the Indian to learn the Indian language and to, you know, teach Indian uh, in an education system where they could be taught their own things. Uh, of course, they also encouraged the Britishers to, you know, know their language in order to make the Indians feel more connected to the Britishers in order to win their hearts. So that is why a madarsa was set up in Calcutta where uh, these teachings were being imparted. In 1791, the Hindu college was set up in Banaras. This college again uh, was uh, teaching Sanskrit because uh, the Orientalists believed that uh, teaching in their own language, uh, teaching Indians in their own language, you know, uh, you know would uh, reap greater goods than teaching in some foreign language. In 1830s, William Adam chose Bengal and finds Parshalas. So, uh, uh, the Britishers sent William Adams to, you know, uh, create a survey to have a, a survey about the schooling system in the primary level. And he taught to Bengal and Bihar and found out that there were over 1 lakh partialas with 20, more than 20 lakh students in them. So that is what happened in 1830s. In 1835, the English Education Act was enacted. Obviously, this education system... Uh, uh, granted a special significance and uh, significance to the English language, the education being taught in English language, and it uh, opposed the idea of Orientalism entirely. In 1854, Woods Dispatched was uh, issues, issued. So, uh, having a very uh, huge impact from uh, Lord Macaulay's uh, thoughts, the Woods Dispatched was issued uh, by the by Charles Wood in uh, 1854, which set up a new set of uh, set of education system in India. So in 1901, Rabindranath Tagore established Shanti Niketan uh, because as a child he was enclosed in a space where the education was being imparted in schools, of course. So he thought that uh, in that way the children's creativity are you know subdued; they are, they could not grow more. So he thought that uh, they could be, you know, uh, inst uh, they could instill the creativity in students in a natural environment. So he thought that an open space would, you know, have more productive impact on the children while having the education in a way that uh, they would be learning things and they would be open in the area. They would be open to, you know, create their own ideas and have their own uh, way of learning things. Also, he had a method in which he combined both the ways of First, the ways of the best of what Indian education system had to offer. And secondly, the best of what the ed Western education, the European education had to offer. So he combined both the things. He thought that both the things were necessary for a student in, its, in his education, in his or her education system. And he also uh, promoted this in a natural environment. So that is why Shanti Niketan was established. It was in a very open environment. Uh, Children uh, were used to uh, get taught in a very open, uh, natural way. And uh, there was no enclosed buildings in which they were taught. There was a very open space. Moving on. The British felt that they had to civilize the natives and change their customs and values. So when the British they came to India, they thought that not only they had this obligation to conquer the territories of India or to make profit from the markets of India, but rather they thought that they had this moral sense of duty to civilize the natives. They thought that Indians were not civilized. They did not practice a civilized way of living. Their way of lifestyle was far inferior than those what Europeans, the Britishers at that time were having. In their opinion, they needed to civilize the natives. They had this upon themselves they took this upon themselves they gave themselves this authority to civilize the natives and change their customs and values they, they did this through uh, introducing the various ways of education system first the oriental way and second uh, second uh, opposing the oriental way and uh, providing an english way the british way european way of education now the second point is william jones and colbrook felt that Indian civilization had attained its glory in the ancient past, but had subsequently declined. So William Jones and Colebrook, when they studied the Indian ancient texts, and when they came across the various laws and customs and traditions and textbooks that Indian texts had to offer, they came to know that India had a very glorified past and uh, it had glory in its ancient period. 
but then it subsequently declined so in order to have that uh, glory you know regained to have the uh, faith instilled in the minds of indian that their past was a glorified past and they could still have it they promoted the uh, edu- they promoted education system of their own ancient text of indians own ancient text in their own language so they could learn how their past was glorified and they could move towards the path this time again the third one is the english education act of 1835 made english the medium of instruction for higher education the whole idea behind this was that english should be imparted uh, the education should be imparted in english language because it would help they thought that it would help uh, the indians know the actual practical sense of education it would help them get aware of the science and technology and advancement that the europe was seeing at that point of time they would be more civilized if they learned the european way of living the european education system so all this was in the mind of englishmen of course they thought that there were economic benefits as well because the uh, uh, if they introduce the if they introduce indians the uh, importance of trade and commerce via the english education system the indians would realize what benefits they could reap from the trade and commerce and of course the english could then you know uh, uh, give occupation to the indians to the jobs that were there in india so that would help them as well the last was uh, what's dispatch of 18 54 set out an establishing set out on establishing an education policy for india okay that we have already seen i'm so sorry the last slide is according to mahatma gandhi uh, western civilization created a sense of inferiority in the minds of indian uh, because he thought that the european education was brought in to show the sense of superiority of the western education and inferiority of the indian ancient text the indian way of education so of course he thought that it created a sense of inferiority in the minds of indians so that they would be charmed away into learning the european way of living and uh, they would like to follow the european way rather than you know having glory having a uh, faith in their own way in their own cultures their own traditions so that is why he thought that western civilization was harmful for the indian at the time that we were having the nationalism movement because he thought that if they would be swayed away to the western culture they would not promote the need for the freedom of india so that is why he thought that it was imperative that uh, the sense of inferiority in the minds of indian should not happen and should not be created by the western sense of civilization last point is rabindranath tagore started shanti niketan in 1901 as he believed that learning could only happen among nature when the mind was happy and at peace so as i said earlier Rabindranath Tagore as a boy uh, he was made to go to school which was obviously which was in a building and he thought he was a- encaged into some space where his creativity could not grow so he came up with an idea that children should be taught at a very natural environment where they, their mind could be at peace they could feel at home and they could be taught the things that they would learn easily and they would also side by side subsequently they would also you know Uh, help it would help their creative minds to grow so that is why he uh, established shanti niketan in 1901 to promote this kind of learning to promote uh, learning uh, when the mind was happy and at peace so this ends our chapter hopefully uh, you like the video uh, thank you